Uh, just what are some team motivations heading into this weekend? Yeah, motivations for us um, continue with our momentum as far as what we've done over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the other part is the pairwise. Uh, you know, we're in a in a one seed right now. We want to stay there and we want to try to elevate. Um, you know, and uh, I think just staying sharp as far as what we're doing here uh, and not deviating from the plan and uh, not getting ahead of ourselves for playoffs. Just taking this weekend uh, one game at a time and making sure that we try to have success doing the right things. Um, hope you started a game against Omaha earlier this year. Is there any consideration on playing him this weekend? Yeah, you know what? Absolutely everything's on the table. You know, um, again, like I said, we're trying to win games. We're trying to stay with consistency and continuity. But in, in saying that, you know, guys have gotten opportunity throughout the year in different times. Uh, Nate Benoit played this weekend. Um, you know, there could be an opportunity with Hobie as well. And, you know, I just had a conversation with him today. He's worked extremely hard. He's won all his games that he's been in this year. Um, that if that opportunity presents itself, be ready for it. So he's ready for it. Um, and then any determinations on whether Smolik's playing this weekend? Uh, Bennett Smolik will be out this weekend. Yes. Um, what have you seen from Cameron this season as far as, like, what helps him as far as being a goal scorer? Camberg? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a guy that's uh, excited to play every single day, and, and it starts in practice. And you know, we had a practice yesterday, and we're doing power play, and and uh, he's on a power play unit, and the penalty kill gets the puck, and they're coming up the ice, and man, he was the first guy out of the zone tracking back, and, and this is practice. You know, at the end of the day, sometimes you can just say, okay, we'll let it go, we'll wait for the next rep. He's relentless, uh, and when you see a guy like that being relentless in practice that transfers into being relentless in games. And I, I see that in his game. And, you know, he's given himself a chance to have success because of the things he's doing. And also the guys around him, too. But he's excited to be here. And I know he's excited to, to take another step. Uh, what has Keaton added to the, the team this season? Keaton Pearson? Yeah. Uh, leadership, uh, experience, uh, stability on the back end. You know, when we brought in eight new guys this year, um, he, he played at a high level where he came from, uh, playing in some high pressure games. Uh, the lights were on him a lot over the last uh, uh, four years that he played. And, uh, and, and, it, and it's shown right now his experience of how he's playing with consistency, but also helping the young guys transition from the first half of the year to the second half of the year. And, uh, you know, we put each one of those guys, those experienced guys that come in here with a young guy, and, and they've helped those guys exponentially. So he's done a great job not only for himself, but for our team. You guys blocked 26 shots both nights. Um, you guys haven't done that in a single game, in a 60-minute game since 2016. And then you did it back-to-back -back nights. And one of those was without Bennett's Molek. Um, kind of what can you say about the team's mentality just to lay it out on the line? Well, they're, they're, they're doing whatever it takes to, to win games. They're doing whatever it takes to play hard for the guy sitting next to you. And, you know, it's funny because I think, you know, you go through the first half of the year a little bit, and sometimes – it, it, it might be convenient to just be an inch off or, you know, hey, I'm there, but I'm not there, and the puck goes right by you. Guys are making a concentrated, concentrated effort to be in the lane to get there, and uh, that takes a will. And, and it's not just one guy doing it or two guys like Ben Zamolak or Keaton Pearson. A lot of guys, Jackson Koontz is doing it. You know, uh, Jackson Blake's doing it. There's a lot of guys in our, our group that normally don't do that. I shouldn't say normally don't do that, but have the opportunity to do it. They're doing it on a consistent basis, and I think that – that resonates with the team. I tell you, when, when that happens on a block shot, no matter who it is, the bench stands up, they, they bang their sticks on the, on the boards. They get just as excited about a block shot than a score goal sometimes. Yeah, was it almost fitting that the third goal, the, the one to kind of seal the Penrose Cup for you, all started because Abram Weeb blocked a shot and that springs McLaughlin for a breakaway? 100%. You know, that's, uh, you know, very easily could have went through. If he didn't block it, went through the net, either go in on the initial shot or a rebound. Well, it's the reverse, right? You block a shot, everybody's at the net. Now you spring a guy going on a breakaway and, and you finish the game 3-0. Uh, uh, it's such a big deal. And, uh, and again, uh, this is playoff hockey. Guys are playing playoff hockey right now. And in order to win in the playoffs, you have to sacrifice your body and the guys are doing it. What have you seen from Owen McLaughlin from his freshman year to his sophomore year now? He's second on the team in points, second on your team in assists, double-digit goals. Well, um, you know, strength was a big thing for him last year. He came in as a freshman, and I think, you know, just – and I think Reese Gaber was the same way for his first year coming in and seeing how hard and heavy the league is and what you got to do to prepare for your second, third, fourth year. He did a good job of working out, uh, training his body, uh, getting stronger. Is he where he's at uh, as far as what he should be strength-wise? 
Probably not. You know, at the end of the day, he's going to keep building and growing his body. But what I see is, is a young guy coming in here, number one is pace of his game. I thought his pace this year has been outstanding as far as, you know, separation speed coming through the neutral zone. You saw it on that that, that third goal we scored on Saturday night, pulling away from a guy. And he was out on the ice for a long time in the D zone. Uh, and, and then the other thing is, is his shot. You know, last year, you know, I think he'd, he'd own up to it too, that it wasn't a very strong or threatening shot. Now he's coming downhill attacks on power plays, entry plays where he's, he's shooting pucks and there's, there's a lot of velocity on his shots. And I think that all comes from strength, the, the, sep the separation speed, his, his shooting ability. And I think uh, just taking a step, step physically and, and, and that goes into his confidence as well. Seems like too, Jackson Kuntz has kind of found a place with those two guys on that line. What can you kind of say about his game? Well, first of all, Jackson Kuntz, um, again, first few couple of years here, Probably not what he expected as far as where where he wanted to be, but kind of knew that what he had to do to get better to get there. And I, it's all it's on Jackson Blake or, or Jackson Koontz that uh, I'm proud of him for sticking with it, for for doing the things he had to do to try to get success, and now he's finally reaping the rewards from it. But um, he compliments those guys. He's a bigger body. He's a guy that can uh, possess a puck in the offensive zone. You know his speed and pace has gotten quicker too. Um, and, and he's a shooter, and, uh, and, and, and those guys can make plays and get him pucks, and he can go to net front and, and uh, not only pick a spot on a shot, but get to net front and be a big body that can jam a puck in as well. So comp compliments that line a lot. And Ludwig Person winning goalie of the week this week. Uh, you know, last four starts, he's only allowed five goals. Um, kind of since that CC, tough CC series, uh, like you say about his game recently. Yeah, you know, he's elevated as well. And, uh, you know, there's some nights where he doesn't get a lot of work. And there's some nights, like against Western, where he got a lot of work. And, you know, I know in years past, he's used to getting a lot of work, and that's where he shines. And he, he was huge this past weekend when uh, when there was a little bit of pressure in our end of the rink to settle things down and make a save when there needed to be. And and uh, he's you can tell he's excited about this time of year. I think this is some kind of unchartered waters for him a little bit as far as you know, uh, having a chance to, to do something special here at the end of the year, and I think he's really excited about it. Um, Alec asked about OMAC, but OMAC and Blake have played all but two games together on the same line this year. They've assisted on half, at least half of each other's goals. Uh, what is it about their connection that you like and has kept them together all season? Well, first of all, that's bad on me separating them, I guess, right? You know, but uh, um, no, I think at the end of the day, um, there's chemistry there. Those guys love playing together. Um, you know, they they read off each other very well. Um, you know, we always kind of joke with them that they're the Sedin brothers that you know pass the puck to each other all the time. And the third guy, you got to make sure you give it to him a little bit here too. But. Uh, those guys, I tell you what, they, they, they're just passionate about playing and uh, they're competitors. They want to be on the ice all the time and, uh, you know, they hang around together too. You know, when they leave this rink, <laughs> they're step in step, uh, you know, as far as being around each other. And, you know, that automatically, I think, builds chemistry too. And, uh, and again, you know, we, we need them to continue to be difference makers. When, uh, when the game was on the line the other night, um, we're up one nothing. You know, we make a good play defensively in the neutral zone. We get a puck, Jackson Blake goes around a defenseman, goes around the far side of the crease, makes a play. That's a difference maker. The, the third goal that we scored, Abram Wee blocks a shot. He goes down. He makes a heads-up play. The goalie's flying out at him. A lot of guys probably don't have the awareness right away to see that goalie coming. He, de he dekes the goaltender, goes in, puts in the open net. Those guys are difference makers. And again, they got to continue to do that. And I think they, they relish that. They love that. They absolutely want to be that guy. And, uh, and again, we got to make sure that, you know, keep pushing them to, to be those guys. You always emphasize special teams, but your PK has really stepped it up a notch the last four games, especially, too. Starts with the goaltending, right? Starts with the goaltending, and then it and then it filters out to the players in front. And you know, when you talk about Ben and Molak and, and uh, Keaton Pearson, the forwards, Dylan James, Julie Jamernick, all the guys that are on the PK, it's about blocking shots and not conveniently getting out of the way. And uh, I, I think that's a big deal. I think the one area we can probably get better at is winning faceoffs on the initial PK. You know, we've lost a ton of them and we've survived uh, with some zone play after that. If we can get that initial faceoff and the puck down the ice, kill some seconds, that gives us momentum. Probably one area where that we got to get better at. Uh, situation here, you guys, you know, just came off a huge emotional win. You know, you guys get the Penrose, but then you get this team 
who's literally fighting for their lives out here in Omaha. So how do you make sure that this doesn't turn into a trap game where you guys are coming off that high and they're fighting for their life? Uh, got the attention of our guys early this week. You know, I, we, we had a meeting on Tuesday morning, uh, yesterday morning, and uh, did some video uh, on what we did good and what we need to get better at, uh, a little bit on, on Omaha and what they bring to the table. But I, I had on the dry board uh, what's on the line, and I had what Omaha had us on the line and what we have on the line. Omaha is 17th in the pairwise. You firmly have to be in 14 and above to be in the tournament. 15, 16 are to the Atlantic winner and to the uh, CCHA winner. So they're fighting for that 14th spot or, or higher. Uh, they know that we're a top team coming in, that in order for them to get to where they need to go, they have to go through us. Um, the other thing is they're fighting for home ice. You know, they're, they want to be at home. We had to go into Omaha last year and win two of the three games down there, which is extremely tough to do, rarely happens. Um, they want to be at home. Uh, so again, there's their motivation. I, I told them they're going to be fighting for their lives, just like Western did this past weekend, trying to fight inside the bubble. Um, the other thing for us, like I told you earlier here, we want to we want to grab the number two spot overall or the number one spot if we can in, in the pairwise. We want to we want to keep going up the ladder on that side. But the other thing for us is having the ability to win game after game after game. We talk about if you have to win, in order to win a regional or the NCAA uh, national title, you got to win two games on a weekend. We've done that the past two weekends. We got to make sure that each and every weekend, it's not just one game, it's not no games, it's two games. We want to win two games and we want to keep that consistency. That's our motivation. Coach, all year you've been a good team in the face-off circle, winning close to 52% of your draws. But over the weekend, Western Michigan actually had a little bit of an edge on draws. As you approach the conference tournament, NCAA tournament, how important is it to have a positive in the face-off circle? It's a huge. It's a very – their very first battle of every play is the face-off. And, you know, we've played Western Michigan this past weekend. They're very good in the in the dot as well. They've got some good face-off um, uh, uh, players with Washi and a, a few others that can win draws. We're playing uh, – Omaha, they've got Sullivan. They've got a lot of guys that can win draws as well. They're they're up right up there, and and usually every year we we're right up there as well. We got to get better at that. I think it's a situation where we want to start with a puck, and if the other team starts with a puck, then you're expending energy to try to get it back. And by the time you get it back, you might have to make a line change. We want the puck. We got to make it do a good job, and it's not just incumbent upon our centermen. Our wingers got to help out. You know, if it's a 50-50 puck battle and the puck's laying there, we got to be willing to go in there knocking a puck back and getting it for possession. So it's going to be a huge key this weekend. 